Yes. Is drop a body and you wouldn't have to pay for lunch. She's reading lyrics off of a song. She asked him, where does it say in the song, truly humble under God, right? She should not be able to go into the rest of the lyrics with this witness because it's really not relevant to anything. All it is is just basically character assassination. What if the police officer, in, for example, said, yes, Mr. Williams gave a statement to me and he admitted being there at the time of the incident. Remember uh, my cousin Vinny? He says, you shot the clerk. And he goes, I shot the clerk? At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. I'm in the middle of a damn confession here. Whoa! I shot the clerk. And if, and if you're not able to flesh the rest of that out, it creates an impression in the jury that what was said at that moment is fact. I just want, I didn't bring this up. Okay. Uh, no intention of playing it. Mr. 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 Steele, I, 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 under, I do understand that. I really do. But I just it's, want to play the song. But, okay. But you can't at this point in time. Yes, I can. It was. When the judge tells you you can't, <laughs> you are going to get sideways with the judge if you just go against it. But, I mean, yes, you can. And and I and I kind of agree with him on this. Oh. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's going to react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board-certified criminal defense lawyer, coming to you with our pearl handle pistol cufflinks and our content genius who gave them to me, Michael Rivers. And uh, today we're reacting to a little update on the YSL trial. A lot of things going on in this trial. Um, wife and uh, Lucci, yeah. Gucci, Finucci, Bamucci. Um, so a lot of things going on, but before we get to that, this is brought to you by eForms.com. eForms.com, very effective way to avoid guys like me. eForms.com, you use it for um, power of attorney, you use it for a, a sales agreement, rental agreement, any kind of business agreement, anything where you need a signature and you need to be protected by an agreement because sometimes you got to have things in writing. I put things in writing all the time, but guess what? If you go to eForms.com instead of calling me, you're going to have a, a professionally drafted legal document that will protect you, and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for it. eForms.com, very effective way to avoid guys like me and protect yourself in just about every scenario. So eForms.com, go there. YFN Lucci, a.k.a. Rayshon Bennett, uh, pled guilty. And we're going to show you what a guilty plea is here first. Um, first, they do the waiver of rights, and then you know, then they go through what they call a factual basis. And he's looking at 20 years. So let's just kind of dial into the court. Ray Sean Bennett, R-A-Y-S-H-A-W-N-B-E-N-N-E-T-T. All right. Uh, at this time, Mr. Bennett, uh, <coughs> Assistant District Attorney Christian has questions for you. Please uh, speak loudly and clearly into the microphone in response to her uh, questions. Ms. Christian, the witness is with you. Thank you, Judge. The first thing you usually in a plea is you go through your rights. You have the right to a trial, you, you have the right to be presumed innocent, and you have the right to cross-examine witnesses, evidence, have witnesses testify for you. You have the right to uh, remain silent or testify, and if you choose not to testify, nobody can comment on your silence, that kind of thing. Are you at this time under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or any medicine? No. Nope. And the other part is to make sure that they're competent because the plea has got to be knowing and voluntary and intelligent. And if you're all high and shit, which has happened, not to me, but I mean, I've had clients that come into the court high. The court can't take a plea from someone who's high. Do you understand that you're charged with the following offenses under indictment 23 SC 188921? Count one, violation of the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, which carries a, a minimum sentence of five years, maximum of 20 years. Now, I don't know why he's pleading at this point. A lot of times people see the writing on the wall, and then maybe they got some discovery saying that snitch is going to say this, this snitch is going to say that. So there's a, Or maybe he struck a deal to cooperate. I, I don't know that at all. But there's a, a number of reasons why somebody like this would would all of a sudden change their mind mid-trial and decide to plead. Count 68, violation of the Street Gang Act. 
which carries a minimum five years, maximum 20 years, count 69, violation of the Street Gang Act, that's minimum five years, maximum 20 years, count 72, violation of the Street Gang Act, minimum five years, maximum 20 years, count 73, violation of the Street Gang Act, minimum five years, maximum 20 years, count 76, violation of the Street Gang Act, minimum five years, maximum 20 years, Count 77, felony murder. That's minimum life, maximum life without the possibility of parole. Count 78, aggravated assault. That's minimum one year, maximum 20 years in custody. Count 78, aggravated assault. Count, that's um, minimum one year, maximum 20 year. Count 80, aggravated assault. Minimum one year, maximum 20 years. Count 81. But this is kind of daunting. I mean, when you read off all these charges, these aren't just little charges. 81, aggravated assault. The minimum is one year, maximum 20 years. Count. And then you see him smile. You know, that's not a good look in court, especially when you're dealing with such a serious case. Count 82, aggravated assault. The minimum is one year, maximum 20 years. Count 83, possession of a firearm during commission of a felony. That's five years consecutive. The minimum is life with the possibility of parole followed by five years consecutive and the maximum you're facing under these charges in the indictment would have been life without the possibility of parole plus 20, 220 years followed by five years consecutive. Do you understand that that's what you were initially charged with in the indictment? Yes. So long story short, he's facing without a plea, he's facing life without. Do you understand that the state has agreed to no pros counts one 68, 70. No process, no prosecution. So they have agreed not to prosecute him for certain crimes. 72, 73, 60, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. Yes. So, Ms. Christian, the only uh, charge under this recommendation is count 69. Is that correct? Yes, Judge. All right. Excuse me. He pled guilty to one count, violation of a street gang terrorism act. The rest of the charges are going to be dismissed. So he's looking at a minimum of five, maximum of 20, and he's in custody. He's been in custody this whole time. So he's probably got, what, how much credit? You know, a lot of credit. Have you reviewed this charge with your attorney and been advised of the minimum and maximum for the charge that you're, the one charge that you're pleading to? Yes. And do you understand that you have the right to either plead guilty or not guilty to this charge? And if you plead guilt, not guilty or remain silent, you may receive a jury trial. Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorneys, Mr. Finland and Mr. Banks, about all the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charges, including any potential defenses? Yes. Do you need more time to speak with your attorney? No. Are you satisfied with their services? Yes. Do you waive a formal reading of the indictment, Mr. Finland? Yes. Um, do you waive any all defects in the indictment? Yes. Do you understand that this... So they have to go through your rights, and that's what they're doing here. Is a um, negotiated plea, which means the state will recommend a sentence of, under count 69, the recommended sentence is 20, serve 10, balance probated, and the special conditions of probation is, are no street gang um, activity, no contact with any known street gang members or associates, no contact with the co-defendants, Reginald Carl So what does that mean? It means 10 in, 10 out. And, you know, if he gets a third off for good behavior, I'm not sure exactly how much time they get off in Georgia, but let's say it's a third off. So 10, you do seven, basically. And he's probably got two in, maybe, maybe. So maybe he does another five. So he'll be on probation for 10 years, and he'll be in custody for maybe five years. That's my guess. Artes Carter, Justin Ushery, Demonte Thomas, Tadricus Glass, Rayshon, I'm sorry, uh, Rayvon. So he can't have any contact with any of his co-defendants. Boyd, Leroy Pitts, Rondavius Hawkins, and Derek Adams. No guns or replica guns. No gang affiliation or conduct associated with gangs on social media. You must be gainfully employed and no further violations of the law. Do you understand that those are the conditions? Yes. Uh, so no guns, no replica guns. 
So no, uh, so, so no videos with guns, basically. And, and Mr. Christian, I just wanted to make sure that the record is clear. You said this was a negotiated uh, plea. This is a negotiated recommendation, but it's officially and formally a blind plea. I just want to yes. make sure the record is clear. Yes, Judge. Which means a blind plea. It's like an open plea, but a blind plea. That means they don't know what the judge is going to do. They have a joint recommendation, but the judge is free to do what he wants. And if the judge sentences you to the 20 years, like 20 in, you can't withdraw your plea. So you're taking a risk when you do something like this. And it, it, and it really is chilling if the judge doesn't honor the agreement, honestly. It's like, if, you, if you're not going to do this, judge, why would you take the plea? Because a defendant's got to have some certainty that the agreement that he's struck with the prosecutor is going to be honored by the judge. Otherwise, why would you plead? Okay. Do you understand that those are the statutory conditions of your... Yes. Situation? Do you also understand that you are to have no violations of state or federal laws while serving out any portion of your sentence to include any period of incarceration to comply with all the rules maintained by county jail where you're housed um, prior to being transported to any facility within the Department of Corrections where you're designated to serve out your sentence. Comply with all the rules maintained by any facility within the Department of Corrections where you are designated to serve out the remaining sentence. Um, you waive a right to appeal any and all terms and conditions of this plea agreement and the sentence imposed, as well as any right possessed in connection with OCGA 244410. And if you violate any of the special conditions that the state is free to revoke the sentence and recommend any penalty allowable under the law. And, that, and that's kind of a bitch, because if all of a sudden you don't comply with anything prior to getting sentenced... Like you don't show up for your PSI, doing a pre-sentence investigation. That's a report that the um, probation creates about the background, about the offense, about finances, about everything related to this individual with respect to the, the sentence that's going to be imposed. Well, then if you don't comply with that, all bets are off. and You can't withdraw your plea. In other words, the prosecutor is not bound by their recommendation. They can do whatever they want. And same if he doesn't show up to court or if he uh, gets a new offense that happens in between then. So it's there's an incentive for you to kind of toe the line because otherwise the prosecution is free to do whatever they want. Including that you be sentenced to the maximum for the charge in which you plead guilty. Yes. Do you understand that in exchange for this plea, the state has agreed to write a letter to the Board of Pardons and Parole stating that the state would not object to the defendant being released from the Department of Carcerations the first time you become eligible or after one third of the sentence has been served, whichever comes first, and you must comply with all lawful authorities of law enforcement. So one third. So if he gets 10 years in and you do a third, that's three years. Of law enforcement while in custody and have no further incidents from the date of this plea in any penal institution. Yes. And the state is recommending you get credit for time served at the time that you voluntarily surrendered yourself into the Fulton County Jail on January 13th, 2021 to present to include any time spent on house arrest as required by law. Yes. So he's been in custody since January 2021. So he's already got that three years in. So he's not, he's not going to do any more time. That's why it all of a sudden became attractive to him to plead. You understand that that is the recommendation that the sent the court the state is making to the court. Y yes. Do you understand that the the judge does not have to accept this recommendation and can sentence you to the maximum? Yes. Basically, you heard the judge say it's a blind plea. In other words, he's not bound by the agreement. One of the things, one one of the downsides of something like that is you you, you don't know what you're going to do. You know, you you don't know what the judge is going to do, and there's an argument to be made that holding more time over his head is more persuasive to control his behavior in the future than whacking him now and then all of a sudden ha having him get out down the road. The prosecutor is going to go into what the facts of the case and what they would have proved. Because you have to have two things. Waiver of your rights, which we just kind of watched that, and it's kind of pretty boring. Now we're going to see what they would have proved at trial. 
Your Honor, had this case gone to trial, the state would have shown that on December 10th, 2020, this defendant, Mr. Bennett, was gifted a 2021 Mercedes-Benz Maybach by his record label. Um, the defendant drove that vehicle and picked up his co-defendants, Rayvon Boyd, Leroy Pitts, and the decedent, James Adams. Um, Boyd, Pitts, and Adams traveled up from Miami, but were visiting the defendant, Mr. Bennett, in Atlanta. The defendant then drove around the city of Atlanta in that vehicle. Um, although Bennett himself did not personally possess a firearm, he was aware that there were firearms in the vehicle to include two assault rifles. At some point, um, defendant Bennett drove to the area of Demick and People Street located in Fulton County. While traveling down Demick Street, um, after passing several individuals who were standing on the street, this defendant stopped his vehicle. The individuals on the street and the individuals in the inside of his vehicle began shooting at each other. This shooting is captured on- When you, when you have this kind of conduct, I mean, it can only go south. And so he's striking a deal where he's going to get, you know, probably out almost time served unless the judge is going to do something different. The shooting is captured on surveillance video, and the video reflects that after Defendant Bennett stopped his vehicle, co-defendants Boyd and the decedent Adams opened the door to the car and began firing assault rifles at Kevin Wright, Nathan Bedford, and others that were on the street at the time. The video shows Nathan Bedford and Kevin Wright and others um, shooting back at the vehicle. During the exchange of gunfire, the decedent James Adams sustained a gunshot wound to his torso that caused his death. After shots were fired, defendant Bennett drove off in the Maybach, which then turned onto People Street. The individuals in the vehicle attempted to pull decedent Adams' body back into the vehicle, but were unsuccessful. After, um, as a result, they left his body on People Street and left the scene. After leaving the scene, he drove the vehicle to his father's house to conceal the vehicle following the shooting. So you got you to shoot out, then he conceals the vehicle, and everything's caught on video. That Remember when I tell you, there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras at the mall, there's cameras at Walgreens. There's cameras, you know, as you walk out of a courthouse. Almost every industrial building that you see has got cameras all the way around it. Every bar has got cameras, multiple cameras inside and out. So, you know, I, that's one of the ways I won a homicide a while back is I just went through all the um, video cam video footage, like painstakingly, uh, and I was able to show that my client didn't do what he was accused of. But I'm telling you, if you want to commit a crime... Be prepared because it's going to be on candy camera. The facts and evidence would further establish that Defendant Bennett is an associate of the Bloods, a criminal street gang operating here in Atlanta and elsewhere. Defendant Bennett demonstrated his... Now, here's, here's the other thing. He's admitting to these facts. He's admitting that he's a Blood. He's admitting that there is a gang called YSL. He's admitting that this is a crime's benefit for the benefit of that gang. I don't know if that's going to mean that they can compel him to testify, but it's quite possible. Association in part by appearing in rap videos with members of the Bloods while displaying gang signs and wearing gang colors. The basis of the state's reduction judge is essentially this defendant has no criminal history. Um, we have spoken with the family in this particular case, and they have have maintained throughout the course since this incident occurred that um, they are on board with the recommendation. They w are more than um, amenable to the defendant's request at this point. And they have also as... Um That's another thing. A lot of times, um, in fact, every time, the prosecutor will say, I can't do that deal because the victims won't go for it. What the victims say or their wishes are, is not determinative in any particular case, but sometimes, and, and quite often actually, their wishes are taken into account. You are aware from the facts is the defendant's level of culpability in this particular incident. He was the driver of the vehicle um, and he didn't have a weapon during the time of this incident. And this is out of the 80 something. So she's justifying while, 
which is giving this particular defendant a lower sentence. And that's pretty common. Yes, Judge. And what is that charge? The violation of the Street Gang Act. All right. For count 69, Mr. Bennett, violation of, of the Street Gang Act, your sentence is 20 years to serve 10 years with the balance on probation. So that is my friend Lucci pleading guilty, and he's looking at 20 years, but not really. He's looking at 10 out, 10 in, um, serve a third of that, which means he'd probably already have everything served. Let's switch gears a little bit. And now we're going to Brian Steele and him arguing in court about the lyrics. Now, the prosecution has picked and chosen little bits of things to play. And it's Brian Steele's argument that they're taking things out of context. So when you do that, guess what? You sort of open the door to, there's a, a rule called the rule of completeness. And so statements of the defendant are not admissible unless, you know, by the defense, unless the defendant testifies. Okay. So like if I have a case and Michael's on trial for murder and Michael said a bunch of good stuff, like he denied, you know, in an interview with the cops that he killed anybody, the prosecution could bring up that interview, but I can't because it's hearsay unless he testifies. So the argument here is, okay, the state put this in. Now I should be able to flesh that out because under the rule of completeness, it gives the jury the true story, not this out of context bullshit. Okay, so let's hear what Brian Steele has to say. Introduce lyrics out of context on redirect under the rule of completeness and under truthfulness to this jury, I would like to do what you already ruled and play the song. And I don't even understand how we're at 24-6-613 prior consistent statement. That's not even close. So he was saying that there's other statements that the defendant made that these statements made in the in the song are prior consistent statements. Which I kind of agree with Brian on this. How can you say some something that he he produced, you know, as a as art, is a prior consistent statement? I mean, we're talking about you're like you're saying, okay, it's snowing, and we're talking about well, let's go, let's go. So since it's snowing, let, let's get our let's get our pails and shovels and dig up the sand. I mean, this is crazy. Their argument. So I I just want I didn't bring this up. Okay. No uh, intention of playing it, Mr. Playing Mr. 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 Steele. I I I, I understand. I do understand that. I really do. But I just if, want to play the song. But okay. But you can't at this point in time. Yes, I can. It was. When the judge tells you you can't, <laughs> you are going to get sideways with the judge if you just go against it. But I mean, yes, you can. And and I and I kind of agree with him on this. To what extent do you you know if they. have if the state is misrepresenting something with just taking things out of context, you should have the full and fair opportunity to correct the record. Okay, but you know what? It's still inadmissible at this point. It's not admissible at this point. Uh, I would agree with the state under 801, 24-8-801, A through C, 802 and 613. At some point, the confrontation clause has to... Those are rules of evidence that he's talking about. ...speak in this courtroom. State, state of Georgia has and level lyrics made, words made by Mr. Williams. I want to put those words in proper... Okay, but, but you won't be able to do it through him. That's, Why it's objectionable. Right person? It's objectionable at this point in time. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's not, a, I'm not... Like I told you before, it's... It's not that it may not be objectionable at this point, but for if evidence comes in for different reasons, Mr. Steele, at this point in time, it's just not coming in. Yeah. I'm not saying that it won't come in at some point in time. This court is handcuffing the Constitution that I move to strike everything said by Mr. Stevens in its entirety because I can't confront him. That's a problem. I think that is a problem. You know, and, and I don't see what the danger is in giving the defense a lot more latitude. You know, you can't get the defendant's statement in in your case in chief unless the defendant testifies. 
You just can't, the defense. And that is a hard and fast rule. But if – and you can't, you can't get – it in through another witness unless the defendant testifies. So you've got this detective who's testifying about all kinds of other crap, and you should be able to say, okay, we talked about these particular words. Let's flesh this out and see, put it all in context. I completely agree with Steele on this. You had, have the awesome power to control these proceedings, but the state of Georgia wide opened that door. I didn't mention anything. Yeah, but that doesn't that does not make the evidence any less inadmissible. They, it doesn't. They took words out of context. And I want to put the words in its entirety the way they are. You should be able to let me see the road to do that. That's a problem. I think that is a problem. You know, and and I don't see what the danger is in giving the defense a lot more latitude. You know, you can't get the defendant's statement in in your case in chief unless the defendant testifies. You just can't, the defense. And that is a hard and fast rule. But if – and you can't, you can't get it in through another witness unless the defendant testifies. So you've got this detective who's testifying about all kinds of other crap. And you should be able to say, okay, we talked about – these particular words. Let's flesh this out and see, put it all in context. I completely agree with Steele on this. To control these proceedings. But the state of Georgia wide opened that door. I didn't mention anything. Yeah, but that doesn't, that does not make the evidence any less inadmissible. They, it doesn't. They took words out of context. And I want to put the words in its entirety the way they are. You should be able to let me see the road to do that your honor i just can't let you do it right now mr steel it's because they because the state's objected to it and i and i and i agree and i agree with them under 801 um a through c let's look at 801 a through c this is not applicable your honor the state of Georgia said, this is what Mr. Williams said. I'm saying, actually, what he said was this, and I'm putting in the completion of the story. The, you know what this song is about? It's about coming from nothing. It's about telling your kids, not that you're riding around the body. It's about telling kids, if you live under the circumstances that a gentleman like Mr. Williams did, you may have to kill somebody because they're going to kill you. Wow. It's so inspirational. Um, we're not buying, you know, the, his alternative explanation. But at the same time, I do agree that he's got the right, and and it should be, you know, the state shouldn't be allowed to just cherry pick what they want. You need to be able to flesh that out. It's self-defense. The state of Georgia wrapped all that up in little lyrics and misconstrued what they are. But here's the thing. How is he going to get the meaning of those songs in through anybody else except for his own client? I mean, you can't do it through the detective. Detective doesn't know fucking shit about the, the nature of the song. I, mean, I can't imagine he's going to want to do it through the snitch because the snitch isn't going to be able to give you what you want because he's giving everything for the state, right? So he wants to just play the whole song and then be able to argue about it later. I have every right I need to put this in. And it's not going to say, later, judge, this trial, I don't know, I've never been to a case like this. This trial will go on until Super Bowl next year. I don't want to do it in seven months. It is right now, and I should have the authority to do it, Your Honor. And I don't disagree with them. I mean, there's, when you have a really long trial like this, you ever hear of the primacy effect? You know, you, you see these glasses at the beginning of the trial, and all of a sudden, nine months goes by, you see these again, you're like, what the fuck are those? You don't, you don't remember it. So if the state has played or used some of the lyrics now, now is the time to put it all into context. So Steele's making an excellent argument here. You know, I'm doing everything that I know to be upfront. I give everything I don't have to give. I give everybody a heads up, and it gets spun around. I get to play this song, the song I want to play, and I ask you not to keep doing this and listening. Once you rule, it's coming in, which one? 
The state was saying before lunch, I'm, I'm somehow changing the lyrics. The lyrics don't change, I tell you that. Now it's all said another reason. Your Honor, you have ruled, I use your ruling, I embrace them, and I am correct. There, there has to be a point that we have traction here too. You know, this whole battle about putting lyrics in, into a trial like this, I, I, I'm totally against it unless it, they talk about specific events. If it's just general character evidence, you know, oh, he, he talks about killing, he talks about this, you know, and just being that guy. If they're just general character bullshit, they shouldn't come in at all. But if they do, and the defense wants to flesh it out, Mr. Steele's absolutely right. It was mentioned before Mr. Steele it from his memory. Miss Love was saying, the, you know the song, and here it's the song. Here are the lyrics. I want to put in the actual song. The way I want to put it in the video, and then we're done. But judge, to exclude it, it makes it look like I'm conceding it, and I'm not. And I would not. And to, to hide behind a, a hearsay statement when you open the door on that specific state. I, I was thinking about this over lunch. What if the police officer, in, for example, said, yes, Mr. Williams gave a statement to me, and he admitted being there at the time of the incident. You remember, remember uh, my cousin Vinny, where um, he says to Ralph Macchio, the sheriff does, he says, you shot the clerk. And he goes... I shot the clerk? Yeah, you shot... I shot the clerk. When did you shoot him? What? At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. Hey, Dean, we need you out here. I'm in the middle of a damn confession here. Whoa! Wait a minute! I shot the clerk. Clerk. And, and, and the inflection in his voice was, wait a second, I didn't shoot anybody, but he actually said, I shot the clerk. And if, and if you're not able to flesh the rest of that out, you know, in the moment, it creates an impression in the jury that what was said at that moment is fact, when really it's not. And that's what he's talking about here. We just heard Brian Steele talk about evidence that he's trying to get in, you know, and look, let's see what, what he's responding to. We're kind of doing this in reverse a little bit, but it makes more sense to do it this way. So let's see what the prosecution was doing and uh, and how it makes sense to what Brian Steele just talked about. I was smoking Scotty, but not Pippin. I taught my son how to stack that sh to the ceiling. Also, a part of dropping jewels. Yes. Is drop a body, and you wouldn't have to pay for lunch. So this is a problem, I think, for the. I completely disagree with the judge's ruling. She's reading lyrics off of a song. She asked him, where does it say in the song, truly humble under God, right? She should not be able to go into the rest of the lyrics with this witness. She just shouldn't be able to, because it's really not relevant to anything. All it is is just basically character assassination. I told my dog on why, whether he right or wrong. I done got big. They record my life through a drone. I told my to stay behind me. There should be objections, though, honestly. Because he's not objecting. My zone. She like, how the f you ain't never wrote a song? You riding for life, then I just rather die alone. Bought you a spot, now you don't. Never got a gun. What the fuck is the purpose of her reading these lyrics into court for him? You know, I, I, I don't know if, if the lyrics are actually in evidence at this point, because I, I don't know if they are or not. Um, but what's the purpose of her asking this witness about these lyrics. All it is is character assassination. So, yeah, I told my I'm dropping the jewels on him. You gotta go through that with your heart. You can't snoop. Objection. Compound question. Objection. Improper question. Objection. Relevance. Why aren't there any objections here? Are those also words in the song Dropping Jewels? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? I mean, where's the objection? Is there any part of what I just read that refers to the defendant Williams being truly humble under God? There we go. I'm going to overrule the objection. You may answer it. 
Number one, that is speculative. And number two, it's irrelevant. You said do what you just read, talk about God. No. Okay. It's the line, you got to go through this with your heart. You can't snooze on it. It's bad. You better get rid of it or lose on it. I know you heard that old saying about bad fruit on me. If you can't beat them. How in the hell is she allowed to just go through this song with this guy and then not allow the defense to flesh it out? What's the point? I mean, there's, there should be objection after objection after objection. The fuck is she allowed to do this? You know, it, it is, there's another thing, too, called more prejudicial than probative. What is this probative of? Of the issue of um, truly humble under God? Whether these statements are consistent with truly humble under God? We've already established that, that the song isn't that way, right? So what? I mean, so now, now it's, you know, repetitive. It's irrelevant. I mean, I just, I think the judges should have taken some control here. So you can, you can see, you know, what Brian Steele was objecting to or pleading with the court. Okay, let me put the whole song in. I mean, she talks a lot about, uh, you know, a lot of different lines in the song. But... On re on recross, you know, hopefully he cleans some of that up. So this has just been our kind of a very technical uh, update on the YSL case. So we'll continue to follow it, and it's going to be a long, long trial. So we're, we got a lot more to go. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm with Michael Rivers, your content genius. I am, uh, uh, you know, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm part of Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?